Do the Wuja Edge strap or vest add more to your audio, music listening experience, movie experience, gaming experience? Or do these haptic audio driven vests and belts actually take away something and you could be better off spending your money elsewhere. Let's take a deeper look into what it is they purport to be and what it is you actually get. Hi everyone, it's Stu here from 3B. Now you may remember some time ago, perhaps over a week or so ago, I did a, an initial unboxing of the Wuja vest, the, the Edge, the latest version, and also of the strap, which I also got. Now I actually bought these. Um, they weren't given to me or sent to me for review. So you do kind of know that you're going to get a, a pretty honest, uh, somewhat critical review um, because I'm, I'm not easily pleased. Having said that, my initial impression, impressions from the unboxing was very positive. You know, the build quality is actually very good, very high for both the units. The cheaper strap, um, you know, is just designed to sort of go around your waist, my waist, or your chest, or wherever you want to sort of feel that sort of base uh, element of whatever it is you're listening to, be it a game, music, a movie. And the vest is a much more um, full-on device, wearable device, um, that has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six um, sort of haptic speakers built into it. And from my initial impressions, and I still stick by this, the actual build quality is actually very good. Um, however, having lived with this and tried it for over a week and tried it with some, some games, um, music and movies, uh, I'm still trying to figure out who this really is for. Um, and, and, here's, and here's the rub, here's the main thing, my main grief with it, and I will cut to the chase because it pretty much encapsulates the whole issue with the Wuja vest and similar vests and similar sort of haptic vests that are driven this way. It is very important, it is very important to understand that these are driven through the audio input. Now how you get that audio into this device is a problem in itself depending on what you're running. Um, but that's a thing we'll get onto in a moment. So both of these devices rely on audio. And that audio is then being fed from your device, be it TV, phone, computer, whatever it is you're feeding it from, into the vest or the strap at full volume. And then you then connect your headphones to the output of the the Wuja device that you're you're using. Now all that sounds sort of well and good and you sort of think, yeah, okay, that's easy enough. But the problem is, is the very fact that it's using audio to take that element to then give you sort of a bass response to you in a physical form. And by that, uh, that leads to a lot of problems. The problem being is, um, it really is, for music, it is predominantly just suited to dance, drum and bass, things that have a very strong, physical, um, punchy element to it that you, would prob that you would benefit from that. Anything that sort of deviates from that, all you're likely to get is kind of a rumbly, a disjointed sort of bass feel, something that isn't thumpy quite literally, um, that isn't then fed sort of through the audio. Remember, it's all through audio that these are driven. These are basically, I've not opened them up clearly, but I imagine they're sort of uh, 
um, high powered sort of magnetic elements that sort of feed that audio element too. And also when you turn it all the way up, you can actually hear the audio coming through these. So they are sort of basically um, uh, speakers of a, of a sort. Um, and and that, that is okay for that type of music. If you're, say, playing a game, a good example in terms of a game is that I was wearing this for the VR game um, Half-Life Alex, and I was using my index and I thought it would give me a feel of being more part of the world in terms of the sound and the environment. And, and all it really did is I just felt it rumbling all the time because, of course, with games, you have other elements surrounding. You have the environmental effects, you have the music, um, you have the, the character voices, as you would in, in many respects. And this same applies in many ways to film as well when you're watching movies is that it's not just the base elements that say you would get through a sub. These are not sort of using that lower frequency in its truest form because it's not being fed a low frequency signal. These are just trying to sort of disconnect the base as it were itself and it doesn't do it that well. And I don't know whether that's a software thing or whether it would improve if it was, if they, they, they tweaked that an awful lot more. But from my experiences, from having worn this and the strap when playing games or watching a movie is, is you just get a lot of feel of everything rather than just the punchy elements, say, if there's an explosion or bullets or, or, or anything like that, or if somebody, say, a, a, a monster is attacking you in a game and, and you get that feel of, of being attacked. Uh, you, you don't. You just get m more aggressive rumbling. And that sort of, and it becomes distracting. And that's what I felt with, with both the strap. It was a lesser, with the strap it was a lesser distraction because it's a less physical thing on your body and it's a less sort of physical element to you. Um, and we'll get on to how it feels really in a moment and also the comfort. That, that to me was a huge downside because the expectation is you're getting this thumpy, powerful bass element of whatever it is you're, you're watching or playing or listening to. And I only got that when I, I sort of listened, to, and I don't, but when I listened to some sort of drum and bass or dance music that had that very defined bass element to it, it worked great with that. Anything else it didn't work great with at all. Now, moving on to um, the, the comfort. The strap is a lot more comfortable than the vest, um, but in terms of bass response, obviously you're only getting it in sort of one area. Um, they're very easy to put on in terms of the straps, very easy to put on. You are aware that you're wearing it, of course, um, and then the, the vest is actually more cumbersome. I'm, what am I? <laughs> I'm lots of things, but what am I in terms of build? I'm sort of a medium, you know, I'm 33 waist. 43 chest, 42 inch chest. So t-shirts are sort of on the medium to large, um, trousers, jeans, and so on, 33, 32. Um, so if you then sort of take that, um, I found this, it is kind of cumbersome to put on because even though it's very well padded and actually very well made, I'll give it that, um, once you've got it on, it feels like you're wearing a bulletproof vest. You know those vests that news reporters wear in dangerous zones? It feels like I'm wearing one of those. It's, you cannot get comfortable wearing it. Um, you can't lay down, lay down, sit down or sort of uh, recline and enjoy a movie because you're so aware that you have this surrounding you. And I imagine anyone 
of any size really would have trouble with that. People of larger sizes that are larger than me, I would imagine would have quite a bit of difficulty getting all of this around them. And one of the things I did face, and I won't put this on because I have to have this here uh, because my lavalier has, has died. Um, but uh, is, is the fact that these, the speakers that are here actually don't seem to, you have to adjust them to get over your chest because they keep sort of slipping. Maybe I've got big boobs. They keep slipping sort of to the side a bit, even though I'm sort of tightening the, 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 the mid strap here, the sort of the chest strap as much as I can. It's still, you still feel these, these speakers, these sort of haptic speakers slipping and are moving to the side. So those are the sort of the initial feels, feels quite literally that I got from this. And also I found um, that even though it said if you're overdriving it, these speakers will rattle. And I, even though when I, it's the kind of thing you, if you don't overdrive it, you don't feel much and you just get a bit of a rumble. But if you do overdrive it, they rattle. So yeah, you're kind of stuck between a literal, well not literally, but a rock and a hard place in terms of getting something that's remotely what you probably expected or something that's kind of very underwhelming. Connecting to Bluetooth is very easy. It's pretty standard as it is connecting to any Bluetooth device. But yeah, so there was a lot of issues and remember me saying about that the audio cable was very short? Well, that's kind of where it comes in, that your audio cable is only that long. So it's really only good if you're connecting to say, a mobile phone. All iPhones these days don't have three and a half inch jacks. And uh, even Bob agrees, Bob's going to say hello. And uh, you know, so it's, it, it, there is, they need to do a better Bluetooth implementation. I think it's just got a standard Bluetooth implementation that, yes, I know, um, that it's just not very easy or user-friendly to use. Okay, go away now, thank you. So yeah, they, they need to, to, to make it easier to use in terms of being able to connect to a, maybe having a, a jack that has two, uh, 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 Bob, enough. Come on, come here, come here. Do this review with me, okay? Bob is 19, by the way. Um, where was I? Yeah, so maybe if they supplied a, a connector that had um, you to, uh, an ability to, connect different devices easier to it and a longer supplied um, three and a half millimeter jack and maybe some adapters to connect it to other devices other audio devices so you know a larger jack for uh, sort of better hi-fis and so on so it's just I just found it very awkward and a lot of faffing around connecting devices to it and yeah, it just, it just became a real pain. And by the time you've got it on connected, the output device has to be set at full volume. Uh, so the input device rather has to be set at full volume and then you have to connect your headphones to this, as this part of it or this part of it here and then adjust your audio that way. It just became too much of uh, an issue you know, you want to game, you don't want to spend ages fannying around trying to get this on and then connected and then at the right volume. And then of course you have to be very, very careful unplugging anything because as soon as you unplug the, 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 uh, the source or this from the source, you, your then source is coming through either the speakers or whatever it was coming through before at full volume. So you've got to make sure that you turn those down and they don't make any comment on that at all. It's like put your device at full volume and then plug it straight in and 
and then adjust it from there. But um, as far as I'm aware, they don't say, you know, or when you take it off, don't forget before you do that, turn it all the way down and then do that. So I must say, you know, overall, I'm, I'm pretty, aren't we? We're, we're quite disappointed in the, um, in what the Wuja is. You know, it gives the impression that you get this very solid, deep feel of bass. And I only got that with a particular style of music, um, you know, drum and bass, dance and so on. That's all it worked with. If that's your thing and you want that, then that's great. If you want it for movies, games, uh, or anything like that, or other types of music styles, you're not going to get the experience that perhaps you were led to believe you would get, simply because they're audio driven and it's, and it's taking the, the elements of that music as its entirety and feeding it through you know, it's, it's, it's haptic speakers and then to you. Setup is, you know, is pretty straightforward. There is a couple of videos that they show to set it up, but that's just a basic bass response video um, to sort of get the feel at the right volume on these uh, things. So it's not really necessary to go through all that because it's quite straightforward, but yeah, overall, I, I wouldn't recommend getting a Wuja. I feel that I've wasted near four or five hundred pounds getting these and I'll probably never ever wear them again. So yeah, look out for them on eBay. <laughs> um, you know, but I'm sure for the right people, for the right audience, um, maybe I'm not, but the, the impression I got was that, you know, whatever it is I'm listening to would be amplified to me physically through my body uh, and that's simply not the case with this. So yeah, wouldn't recommend it sadly. And uh, yeah, look out for one of these and this on eBay on UK, in the UK soon. I will be doing more reviews. I've got plenty of stuff. Um, could maybe even review Bob. Hey Bob. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, you know, a, 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 a it doesn't really matter, you know, doesn't really matter at all. Your, your, your feelings are your feelings. And if it gives me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, that's good. Good either way. Consider subscribing and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks again. Take care.